Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to the Northwest Baseball Report podcast. This is your recap show for April 1st through the 4th, and what a weekend it was. Lots of games being played. The weather was great. The NWAC is almost at full force at this point. It is great to see. I had a lot of fun. I actually had to go out and cover some baseball this weekend. It was it was glorious. That's just the best way to put it. Guys, before we jump into things, I do want to say thank you to my sponsor, Portland Baseball Club. Uh, they are they came up big trying to help out, get the Northwest Baseball Report going, being able to help fund the cost of this podcast right here to be able to cover the cost of the site. Um, it, it was a big help. Still looking for more sponsors out there. Um, every sponsor I get helps me do more with the site, get to more games. But you know what? Just having Portland Baseball Club you know, being a sponsor, being a supporter has made a big difference already just in the first month and a half of having the site. Uh, it's been it's been really nice. It's been really encouraging. And I just want to thank them. There's a link down in the description below. So if you're in the Portland area and you're looking for a summer team, fall ball, or even just a place to get opportunity to train during the off season, check them out. They have an indoor facility down in Tualatin, uh, right outside of Portland. So Check them out. If nothing else, guys, tell them thank you. Because once again, you know, I'm doing this really for free in essence. This isn't my job, although I have found that I'm putting about 40 hours in a week trying to get everything lined up. Um, so having sponsors is the difference between me being able to keep going with this uh, versus, you know, struggling. It's, it's that simple. So thank you to them. Thank you to anyone else who's thinking about it. Uh, I also have Patreon for individuals who want to support the the. Uh, the site and everything, help me get out to more games. So a number of different options, whether you're a business or an individual, um, there's ways to support Northwest Baseball uh, Report. Guys, second thing I want to talk about is the fact that, hey, if you're out there and you're a college student, or even if you're not a college student, and you just want to write sports articles, you want to help cover baseball in the Northwest, let me know. Uh, I, I spent a lot of hours putting together the recap uh, for this weekend for both articles First of all, I might have to actually do additional articles because there's just too much stuff uh, being, being put out there for one article. But you know, I got a lot of stuff. I could really use other individuals. I can't pay anything because the money I'm getting in right now is just paying for the site and the upkeep of uh, subscriptions, that type of stuff. But I mean, if you want to buy a line, you want to get or just want to help out pr promote baseball in the Northwest, let me know. Uh, there's tons of stuff that people can, people can do to help out. Um, just so we can get more coverage of the Northwest. That's really the goal. But guys, enough of that. Let's jump into our recap for the weekend. Like I said, there was a lot of stuff going on. So we're going to start right off the bat with the Great Northwest Athletic Conference. There was two uh, series going on. The first series was Central Washington versus Montana State Billings. And Central Washington would come out and win three of the four games. And they just scored runs like crazy in fact both teams were scoring like crazy total in the four game series there were 90 total runs scored the game scores listen to the game scores 21 15 7 to 6 10 to 9 and 17 to 5 so the offenses were going crazy they were hitting the ball uh tyler mcclain from central washington he drove in eight runs over the weekend uh he had two home runs that's that's a big that's a big weekend that is that's awesome to see. So we got that going on. Uh, the other matchup over the weekend was Western Oregon versus St. Martins. And Wu would sweep the weekend. They would get out there. They'd have some great pitching performances. Uh, Mike Peterson would go eight innings, striking out nine, only allowing one hit in his outing. Uh, his record is now 3-0. and oh. So, you know, they've got some good pitching down with Western Oregon. You know, getting that sweep is big. It helps them out. And right now in the GNAC, the standings are Northwest Nazarene still in first place. They had a, a weekend off. They're 11 and 1 in conference, 17 and 3 overall. Uh, Western Oregon is in second place at 9 and 3 in the conference. Central Washington at 6 and 6. Montana State Billings at 5 and 11. And St. Martin's in conference is 1 and 11. So, guys, let's move on to the next conference. And that is the Northwest Conference. They had four different matchups going on this weekend. The first was Puget Sound versus George Fox, and George Fox would win the series, winning three out of the four games, and that actually kind of pushes them up into fourth in the conference. Uh, they've been kind of lingering in the middle, lower half to start the season, but 
Uh, George Fox is coming on a little bit stronger lately and actually has a chance to uh, really kind of make a play towards the end of the season for um, the end of the season tournament and see how things go. Uh, but once again, they came out, they won three out of four, did the, did what they had to do. They had to get out there and, and produce, and, and they're doing that. Another matchup out of the Northwest Conference, Whitworth versus Pacific, and Pacific would take three out of four. They're having a pretty strong season right now, and it doesn't hurt when you have someone like Chase Anderson, who had a monster weekend from the leadoff spot. He had nine hits, three home runs, scored eight runs, and drove in 11 runs. That's your leadoff hitter for Pacific. That That is unbelievable. That is a tremendous weekend for Chase Anderson. Um, so fun to see that. You know, hopefully at some point I'd love to get down there and cover Pacific. They're not too far away from me. Um, so that's the goal. See what happens. Third matchup of the weekend for Northwest Conference was Whitman versus Linfield. And Whitman needed to um, really keep pace with Pacific in order to be at that first place and, and keep going on for the uh, regular season title. And they would win three to four as well uh, going in there. Had, right now they are tied percentage points, winning the winning percentage. Uh, I think they're both uh, 750 is their winning percentage in conference. Uh, Whitman did have last week off, so they actually are a few games uh, less than what Pacific's played so far in conference. But right now, those two teams right at the top, they're playing well. And for Whitman, uh, Garrett Runyon had five hits, had a home run, collected four RBIs. So doing what they need, doing what they need to do to keep uh, keep in the race for first place in the regular season. Last matchup that happened in the Northwest Conference. Uh, was Lewis and Clark versus Willamette. And both teams really needed this weekend to really kind of propel them through the rest of the season, to really kind of get them into a good spot. And it would be Willamette who would end up taking this series 3-1. to one, And they're actually up into third place right now in the division. And so this was a big weekend for them. Uh, Ethan Fishkel had four home runs on the weekend, uh, collecting seven total hits, driving in 11 runs. Samuel Daly had nine hits, two home runs, drove in six runs. So uh, big weekend for those two guys for Willamette. So right now, as I kind of mentioned, the standings for the Northwest Conference Pacific. First place are 12-4 and four in conference. Whitman at second, or technically tied for a winning percentage, 9-3 uh, and three in conference. Willamette is 9-7. and seven. George Fox is six and five. Pacific Lutheran uh, is six and five. And Pacific Lutheran actually played uh, Seattle University in kind of just a, um, I don't know, a, a non-conference game and took them to extra innings. They did a good job uh, competing as that Division One school. Uh, Whitworth is five and seven. Lewis and Clark is six and ten. Puget Sound five and nine. And Linfield uh, rounding out the conference at three and eleven. So guys, let's jump into the. Uh, next conference, that's the Cascade Collegiate Conference, where there were two matchups this weekend. LC State uh, took on Oregon Tech, and LC State is a top-ranked team, and they showed it off this weekend. Uh, they scored a minimum of 12 runs in every game this weekend. Uh, Matt James would hit three home runs over the weekend, had 10 hits, seven runs scored in the sweep. Uh, so LC State just you know showing their dominance and making a push to be um, really one of the top competitors going to the national title run at the end. Uh, also this weekend was Corbin versus the College of Idaho. And Corbin would, would go into Idaho and actually split with them. That's not a bad, um, when you go on a road trip that far away, getting a split's not not the worst thing to do. So uh, they went in there. Dimmick Wood from College of Idaho uh, did pitch a complete game, striking out 10, only gave up three earned runs, uh, getting a victory for him. And then uh, Nate Martin from Corbin would go have a pretty good outing, doing seven and a third innings, only allowing one run. Uh, he'd get a win. And then Zach Simon, who has been on a tear this year, he has a five and two record. He actually pitched a complete game, only allowing one earned run. So Corbin's got some pitching. You know, they've got some pitching down there. They've got some um, ability to go deep into games and give their team a chance. And and honestly, you know, that's that's what you got to ask from your pitchers if they can do that. Your team has a chance to be in every game. But guys, let's let's check on the standings for that conference. Uh, LC State, as I said, they are just dominating that that conference. They're 19 and one in conference, 26 and two overall. I think the last I saw, they were ranked number seven overall. That could change uh, this weekend. They could go up a little bit higher. I'm not sure how the rest of the uh, NAIA played out this weekend. 
Uh, you have Corbin at 10 and 10 at second place, Oregon Tech 9 11, College of Idaho 7 and 13, and Eastern Oregon uh, had the bye weekend. They are 3 and 13 in conference. Now, guys, let's jump to the NWAC, the Northwest Collegiate or the Northwest Athletic Conference. And this, this is fun for me to see. As you guys know, I've been covering the NWAC for this is actually season number seven. Um, so it's fun to see them up and running, going full bore. There's only a few teams that haven't played yet. In fact, one of the teams that hasn't gotten out and played a game is Yakima. I will actually be there on Thursday covering that game uh, with Big Ben. So I'm excited to do a little road trip for a day. But guys, let's jump into it. Let's start with the South region in the NWAC. Mount Hood took on Clackamas, and it was all Mount Hood. Now, there was one game that went 12 innings. Uh, Clackamas had a good chance to... Uh, win that game, but it ended up being Mount Hood. Once again, they swept. And, uh, you know, some good overall play by Mount Hood. They had pitching that took care of business. You had uh, Jeffrey Nelson, Eli Takalo, who actually combined for a shutout in game two. Um, you had Ezra Samperi, who led the offense with seven hits and eight runs scored. So a lot of good things going on for Mount Hood, starting the season off, getting it going. The South region is going to be a tough region. It is going to be uh, it's going to be a, a dogfight all the way through. Mount Hood, Umqua, Lane, Len Benton, Schmeckita, all five of them are going to be pretty tough. Swalk is going to get some wins in there. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be a dogfight. It's going to be a fun division, a fun region to watch and see how that plays out. But also in the South region, we had Umqua taking on Lane, and this was, this is all about the Road Warriors. The road team won every game uh, this weekend, so that both teams split the series two to two. Um, Actually, a lot of great pitching this one, it looked like, um, with Umqua winning games 3-2, to 2-0, two, two to Lane winning games 4-1 to one and 4-1. to one. So not a lot of high scoring, but it seems like the pitchers came out and, and took care of business. I know Blake Crippen from Lane uh, had an outstanding outing. He went seven innings pitched, only allowing two hits and shutting out Umqua. So a uh, big day for him. So uh, fun to see that South region kind of develop as we uh, get going into the season. Uh, also going on this weekend in the South region was Lynn Benton versus Swalk. And Lynn Benton would just have a solid all-around weekend. They'd get the series sweep. Um, Jake Hoskins would set the tone uh, all weekend from the leadoff spot. He'd have six hits uh, over the four games. Actually scored six times as well. So uh, not bad when you have a leadoff hitter who's getting on base and, and getting around and, and crossing the plate for you. Jumping to the West region now, uh, Pierce and Tacoma faced off against each other in a doubleheader on Saturday. And Tacoma would sweep the doubleheader. And, you know, they just had, they had a pretty good day. They had four different players driving at least three runs uh, in those two games. So anytime you have four players driving in three runs or more, you know you're going to have a good day. You're going to have a good chance to win. And, and sure enough, they were uh, there for the sweep of the weekend. Another matchup in the West region, Lower Columbia versus Green River, which is actually the game that I covered. Uh, Lower Columbia dominated. I mean, that, that's just the easiest way to put it. They had pitching, they had offense, defense was just there. Um, Green River had, I mean, honestly, they made improvements from game one to game two. You saw a little more competitive fight in them, but Lower Columbia is the defending champion uh, for a reason. They've got great pitching, great offense. Uh, they actually have a a trio of guys who are going to be pretty much like the Bash brothers. They're big, they're strong, and they can hit the ball a long ways. So exciting to see that. Fun to uh, be around that to start the season. And, you know, we'll see how things play out the rest of the year for Lower Columbia and for Green River. Also in the West region, we had Centralia versus Grays Harbor. And this sounded like it was a great matchup. Doubleheader. Um, Grays Harbor would, would, won, would win one of the games in, in extra innings. Centralia would come back and, and win the next game uh, pretty easily. So... Great outings by both teams starting the season off, getting their first wins. Uh, Kobe Matson from Centralia uh, would pitch five innings, only allowing three hits and one earned run. So that's a great outing to start the season, and it's, it's good to see uh, both teams up and running and getting on the in the win column. Jumping to the North region, uh, Skagit took on Edmonds, and this is another region that I think is going to be pretty deep, pretty competitive. You have Skagit, you have Edmonds, you have Everett, you have Bellevue. Um, you have other teams in there that are going to, you know, they're going to get wins. They're going to be in there uh, kind of just fighting along. But the North is going to be a, a tough dogfight as well. 
uh, for Skagit and Edmonds this weekend. They actually split the series, uh, both getting two wins. And for Skagit, James Anderson would drive in three runs on the weekend, hit a home run. Uh, Jack Erdman would, would pitch six innings, allowing two hits and only giving up one run. Uh, so a lot of good talent on both these teams. They're going to be competitive all year long. So it be fun to watch the North as well. Uh, also from the North this weekend, Olympic versus Everett. And Everett would sweep the weekend. And they actually had pretty good scoring days the first two games. Uh, 12-2 and 12-1 would be the games the first day. Wouldn't score as much the second day. But once they set a tone, um, you can kind of tell what they were doing. In fact, all four Everett starting pitchers would get the wins um, over the weekend. So Zach Boswell, Kenji Miller, Luke Van Gert, and Alex Schult would uh, get all wins. In fact, combined, they only allowed four earned runs over 24 innings. Pretty impressive. Uh, jumping to the East region, there was only one game in the East this weekend. That was Spokane versus Columbia Basin. And Spokane would come out and sweep Columbia Basin. They'd have some great outings on the mound, led by McCabe Cottrell, who, uh, if you're going to follow this this channel, this podcast, you're probably going to hear that name come up just about every weekend uh, if he pitches. He is probably the most dominating pitcher in the NWAC this year, in my opinion. He just has a ton of stuff. Great from the left-hand side. Throw is hard. Secondary stuff is really good. Been able to see him pitch a couple times. Uh, he's the real deal. And In fact, he went eight innings, struck out 16, only allowed two hits. Uh, he is going to be a force to be reckoned with this season in the East. And you know, along with that, you had uh, Chase Nett and Carson Len Lundmark uh, both added home runs on the first day to help the uh, Spokane Falls Sasquatch get going. And then on the second day, Ryan Cross um, would come up big for Spokane, going five innings in relief, not allowing a hit and earning the, the win in the 10th inning. So uh, a lot of great matchups this weekend. It's fun to see. I'm excited the fact that I got to actually go out, cover some games, and uh, just be out there at the ball field. In fact, a uh, game started at noon for Lower Columbia, and I was there by 10 o'clock and didn't leave till after this after the second game was done. I wasn't about to go anywhere. I was about... I was going to be there all day long, spending every minute I could at the ball field, and it felt great. I loved it. Super excited to go uh, to Yakima on Thursday, and then not this weekend, but next weekend, got some more games at Lower Columbia. I believe they're playing uh, Tacoma on one of the days, and then I'm not sure if it's Pierce or Grays Harbor that's coming in on the second day. And then I'm actually looking at going up to Grays Harbor and covering a doubleheader up there as well the following weekend. Uh, still some things got to work out plan-wise, but excited to get out, excited to cover some games, hoping to get down to Mount Hood for a game as well, hoping to kind of see things open up. I know a few teams um, are allowing spectators already, and there are a few other teams that are preparing to announce uh, their opening up for spectators as well. I'm get, getting rumors of that. I'm hearing from a few coaches. So at some point, uh, there's going to be more teams allowing spectators once again, there's already a few that are, and the ones that aren't, there's usually spots you can sit and watch the game, so uh, it's better than nothing. So, guys, with that, I'm calling it a podcast.